Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, and we are here for your Builders Live, and today is all about spring. I'm so excited I could whip my plants. <laughs> I got you there. <laughs> Guys, um, spring is in the air. Spring is in the air. I told you it was coming. I told you, I told you, I told you. And how do we know that spring is here? Because of this. Look. Oh, man, no matter where you are, you could even be like at a meeting, serious meeting, like kind of like really serious. And uh, there might be one of these a couple of blocks up and the breeze just blows and you get this, this beautiful, beautiful waft of sweet smelling jasmine. This is spring, guys. This is the awakening. These beautiful little pink buds that hold tight. And then before you know it, and like you watch it every day, you're watching it, watching it, watching it. Are you going to open? Are you going to open? Oh, it did in my nose, that. And then, yes, poof, out it comes. Beautiful jasmine. Um, a great climber. A great, also just to use almost as a ground cover. Um, sun or shade. Uh, more sun, more sun. Um, to climb over pergolas, arches, um, up fences, um, especially if you've got that bonnex fencing. But if you've got um, a fibercrete wall and you're wanting to like, you know, get rid of it, then all you've got to do is like put some strings up. Um, put some strings up um, with some hilties so it's got somewhere to climb and away it goes. And in springtime, you'll be blessed with the smothering of beautiful flowers. This is spring. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I guess what it also does, I think this plant in particular, um, you know a lot of plants bring on the, the, the feeling of nostalgia. We, we remember. Um, I suppose like a frangipani or a yesterday, today and tomorrow, um, where they might have been in our mom and dad's garden or our granny's gardens and and when we smell them immediately immediately like in a flash you could be you could be doing the most intense thought process immediately you are transported somewhere else and it's a part of gardening that for me is very special because um, it always reminds me from where i come from um, it reminds me of the people who who gave me the love and the appreciation of gardening and and it also i think most importantly makes us remember those beautiful people you know but it's in a flash it's that sight smell it's all those senses that are brought together but guys today we're talking spring man man it's an explosion i can't wait to show you what i've got here now, for those of you who have done the hard work, yeah, 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 in April and May, um, your gardens are looking pretty cool right now. Yeah, I know the lawn's still a bit brown, but don't worry, we're going to get to that. It's a bit, it's a bit of a slow learner, um, but you're, you've got delphiniums, you've got pansies, you've got foxies, um, your fuchsias are getting ready to burst, your bulbs are looking amazing, and of course there's stuff that we need to do to prolong that, to stretch that out to make sure that we are going to get the most out of it. But they're also plants now that if we put them in now, will herald the, the praises of spring and bring them right into your back garden. And there's also some troubleshooting we're going to do today and some things that we need to start looking for. Yes, gardening is not stagnant. It's not a, I've done the work, I can sit back now and I can chill. No, no, no. It's a consistent Little bits, eat the elephant in bite-sized chunks. Little, little bits of things that we need to do to ensure that we are going to have the next season, which of course is summer. So guys, let's see um, who's with us this morning. And uh, let's say hello to you guys. I saw you all coming online very, very early. Um, so yes, let's hit it. Let's see who's here. Um, good morning, um, Reiki. Um, hello, Van Lekker Natstrand. Guys, have you guys had rain? Man, and cold, cold. Okay, so Cape Townians, you guys are the mountain. Um, I know that 
your spring, well, your, your spring is always a little bit later because you're still getting all those cold fronts pushing through, which is fine, which is absolutely fine. Pay attention because you're going to be doing the same things in about two weeks' time. Exactly. And if not, you could even start them right now. Um, but you've got lots of rain and I need you to have more because your dams are not overflowing yet. And uh, by the way, um, send some of that rain to the Eastern Cape. And um, I know that your cold front is coming because the temperatures are dropping at a rate of knots right here this morning. Um, uh, Janice, good morning from Hillcrest. Felicity, um, good morning from Sunningdale, Cape Town. Um, Annalise Mini, hello from Albertina. Um, uh, my mom, Annette, and I love hearing from you. Oh, thank you, guys. Much appreciated. Fran, good morning from a crispy morning in Howick. Mm -hmm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Debbie, good morning from Leisure Bay. Good to see you with us again. Pat from Cape Town. Daphne. Um, yeah, what's not to love at this time of the year? Um, my Angie, um, that plant you're smelling invaded my garden. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, Jasmine's enthusiastic, but, but, here's the thing. Like anything in life, it needs to be controlled. And if your Jasmine's in a really happy spot, let it, just let it finish flowering, okay? Just, just let it finish flowering, and then you get out your pair of secateurs. Even, you might even need something a bit more, like, robust, like um, head shears or a lopper, and just prune it. Prune it back, get it back under control, and then let it grow again for the next season, and then all will be well. Um, um, Mareiki from Burgersfort, Goeiemora. Uh, Kirsten Evans from Marani Musenberg, oh yes. Schlingiwe, good morning. Um, good to have you with us. Clement Smith from Gordons Bay, good morning, good morning. Um, uh, Freddy's here from Kwamathlange, Mapumalanga, good morning. Um, Edwin from the Netherlands. I know, Netherlands, guys, you having a drought and heat wave. Yeah. Yeah, you're end of your summer, and it's been a bit rough over there, guys. It's been over rough. We have a whole contingency of South Africans arriving in your beautiful country next week, actually. Yes. Um, and going to look at your beautiful garden centres. Um, um, Nomveliso, good morning from Alexandra. Um, Indigra, good morning from Pete Port Elizabeth. Uh, Michelle, DJ, uh, time for lawn dressing, yes. Guys, good morning, good morning, and welcome for those of you on Facebook and on YouTube. Right, 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 right. Let's get to it. So the lawn came up. Ha, 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 the lawn. Okay, let me tell you. Uh, we were in, in, in Joburg yesterday, and man, it, it, the lawns are very brown. Oh, shame, shame. Brown and dusty. So we've got to wake them up, hey? We've got to, like, give them a bit of an adrenaline shot, you know? Adrenaline shot, get them awakened, and let them know, darling, it's time for you to start growing. Okay, so let's take a look at what is happening currently. If your lawn is brown, but you've still got plant material there. In other words, you've still got some lawn. You don't have patches, bare patches of soil. If you have still got lawn there, right, then I need you to do the following. Now, it's a very simple process. We can overcomplicate this. Um, we can add in a lot of heavy duty machinery and, and make it like, like quite a thing, but well, I like to keep it simple. And with that in mind, I want you to do the following. Now, most of you are gonna be armed with one of these bad boys. Okay, this is a garden fork. Um, you can see mine is very old. Mine is really, really old. This is a, one of the old Lasher garden forks, and it's the ladies' fork. Um, okay, right, I'm being handed a very big guy. Okay, that's if you've like got serious muscle power. Um, this is one of the, um, the garden master. No, this is a builder's fork. Now, guys, can you see the difference? Ish, yeah. Okay, you lift this thing up and down a whole lot of times and, um, and you're going to find abs and biceps that never existed um, or a back creak. Um, ask me, I know. Uh, so you can either use this guy, but I really, guys, and, and yeah, maybe I'm just a wuss, but I use this guy. And this is the lady's fork. 
Um, and, and yeah, and it, it literally, if somebody takes it out of my potting shed, all hell breaks loose. Absolutely. Because if I go looking for this guy and it's not there, uh, when I do find it, I'm encouraged to use it for other reasons, just rather than gardening. But this is the deal. I want you to take your fork and I want you to fork your lawn. Okay, you've got to. Yes, fork your lawn. I'll say it properly. Okay, my bad. Uh, fork your lawn, guys. Um, and the reason why we're doing this is because we are going to be aerating. That is the word. We're going to be aerating your lawn. Now, when we, when we poke this fork in, it's very important that you do the following. I want you to get it in at least halfway. Okay, at least halfway. So you're going to impale this guy into the lawn. And then what I want you to do is the following. And this is, this is what I, okay, so let's, there. Now look here, look here, look here. You're going to go in, okay, in. And then you're not going to bend the fork this way. Okay, do you see that? You're not going to do that. You're not trying to lift the lawn. All you're trying to do is get holes in it vertically. So you push it in, wiggle, 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 pull out. Push in, wiggle, 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 out. Okay, and that way we are doing the following. We are then adding in these holes, which are now open. Okay, open little holes into the lawn. And what that does is it allows air to then move in, okay, and place space for the nutrition that we are going to add. So aeration can be done in other ways. You can hire big machines that go gut, 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 and like they pull out um, almost sods of lawn, like big tubes. You can do it that way, but guys, we do it like this, and so you can too. Aerate the lawn in, wiggle, 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 in, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I strongly suggest that you put on a very good loud track of any music that you like. Um, uh, uh, Kurt, um, who else? Abba, Abba, uh, whatever you want. Put the music on because this task takes time and it takes a lot of dedication. Um, so do that and then aerate the lawn and you are ready with your first step. Okay, next step, in order to wake it up, um, I need you to do the following. So, when we're waking up the lawn, guys, the most important thing we need to think about first is we need to activate the roots. I know we want green. Come on, I, I know that. You and me, we, we're the same creatures. We want like, hi, caramba, green. We can't have that. You've got to activate the roots first because remember it all starts in the root zone so we've got to get the roots going before we get the green so in order to do that what i want you to do is put down some of this okay this is an all-purpose 232 232 fertilizer now the 232 fertilizer is going to that middle number over there it's going to activate good root development very important notice this first number is very low. It's only two, okay? And remember that two. I want you to remember it. So we're putting that down. How do we put it down? It's a handful per square meter. Handful per square meter. Or you're going to get one of those, you know, fertilizer distributors. If you can invest in one of those, please do, because it gives you a far better even um, application. You want to put that down. Okay, and then you are going to water. Okay, then you're going to water. Very important that you water because this is a chemical fertilizer and if you don't water, it will burn. Okay, an alternative that you could use as an organic application is you could use some bioorganic for lawns. Now, bioorganic is, is a powder. Um, not a powder really, it's a crumble. That's the right word, it's a crumble. Um, this is a, a nutritious organic product, so when you put it down, you don't have to water. Guys, it will not burn your lawn. This or that, okay? We got it. Now, a couple of weeks after this, um, and I'm talking, say, four to six weeks after you've put down the 232, I personally would go about three weeks, because 
yeah, I'm slightly impatient like you are. So I would go three weeks after you put down the 232. I would then apply this. And this over here is called 713. Now, notice, remember I told you, remember, remember the two? Okay, now look what's happened. That first number has got much bigger. Much, much bigger. It's now seven, which means it's all about the nitrogen. So now we can green up the lawn, 100%. Okay, so then you're going to put this down and once again, give it a good watering. Okay, um, it is, it is, it is, it is important. Please, guys. Um, if you have got dongas and ditches in your lawn, because I know I'm going to get this question. You've got dongas and ditches in your lawn, uneven, by all means, then you can apply lawn dressing. Okay, you apply the lawn dressing the following way. You've done the forking, you've put down the 232, then you put a thin layer of lawn dressing. Okay, your lawn dressing is not thick. Remember, the bits, the blades, yeah, yeah. If this is lawn dressing, we must only put it up to the, you've always got to leave a little bit of lawn sticking up. You always have to. If you cover it, like, come on, guys, what's going to happen? It's going to dead. It's going to turn into compost on your front lawn. Okay, so, so just um, little layers, then allow to grow through, and then a little bit more. Okay, and then you go there. Oh, I see there are questions coming in because we are talking about the dreaded lawn. Ooh, ah, 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 ah. Okay, um, oh, uh, clear queue. Where am I? Oh, dear goodness. He, what have I done? View queue. Oh, 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 oh. Um, pressing the wrong buttons here. Mm, I can't seem to find the questions. Um, okay, let's just go here. Uh, okay, guys, sorry, I'm having a technical issue here. Mm. Okay, give me the question, please. When do you fertilise and awaken the lawn in Cape Town? Oh, when do you fertilise and awaken the lawn in Cape Town? So, guys, your lawn is probably looking quite green because you've had so much rain. So, I would say two weeks from now, two weeks from now, I would put down your fertilizer, okay, because your lawn has had a lot of water, all we're going to be doing is adding your nutrition, so you're going to follow exactly the same steps, okay, now I know some of you are going to ask, but Tanya, I've got patches, I've got patches all over, how am I going to fix this, guys, there are various ways to fi fix patches, so number one, let's pretend, bit of lawn here, bit of lawn here, patches in between, what I would strongly recommend, two things. Number one, that soil that's in between here is really bad. I can tell you now, it's been walked on, it's been stomped on, it's dry, it's awful. So get your garden fork, yeah, your little guy, turn that soil, all right, turn it, get rid of any heavy clods, rake it over evenly, add a bit of compost to it, okay? Then you've got two options, either you can let the lawn then grow and keep that well watered where you have got these patches. So keep the lawn around it well watered so it's encouraged to grow and cover, okay? Or you can go and get some lawn plugs of the same variety that you can then plug in there. You know, you buy them in trays. Or you can simply get one of the many, many, many varieties of grass seed that is available that is fantastic as what I call a quick fix. Okay, so whether it's for shade, whether it's for sun, whether you're looking to fill in with berea, um, whether it's kukuyu, you can get all different types of lawn seed at your local builders, guys. All different lawn seed. And the cool thing about this lawn seed, I mean, I quite love it. They're very smart. So when you open the box, don't break the box, please. I've done that a few times. Um, so when you open the box, look here, and they're all made like this. Doesn't matter which brand, but when you open the box, now, I promise you I've broken the boxes before, <laughs> is open it like that. And then over here, there are actually little bits of cardboard. You just push them out. And then once you've prepared your grass, do you see? This is actually a little sewing thing. So do you see how it comes out? So you can sprinkle your lawn seed nice and evenly. Believe it or not, all the instructions of how to look after it are on the back of the packet. I kid you not, okay, 
follow these instructions. Remember, most of these lawn seeds, bar, kukuyu, and alum, okay, um, or as, as some people know as Berea shade, are tufted grasses. They're not creeping. These are tufted. So please make sure that you follow your application rates properly. If this box says it's going to cover 20 square meters, don't think you're going to be smart and make it cover 40 square meters because then you're going to have these balding little bits coming up all over. It's just not going to look lacquer. Okay. Do we have more questions? Okay. Oh, there we go. I've got, oh, Clements. Mm. I've got three different types of grass in my garden. Oh, closed face. Um, oh, yeah. oh, um, uh, do, I, do I leave it for the strongest one to take over? Clements, I'm going to tell you through very, very, very um, many years of, of heartache and battling, um, I'm going to tell you yes. Um, you know, to keep a lawn pure, is, is quite difficult with the birds coming in dropping the seed it it, it really is a challenge um, I've tried this purest approach for many years um, so much so that I have killed literally physically uh, uh, I, I wasn't going mad at that point I literally said I am killing this lawn and replacing it with pure um, Berea or LM lawn I did that I did that three times not once not one I did it three times times because I'm obsessed with a good lawn. Um, however, maybe with uh, maturity and um, more medication, um, maybe I, I've, I've got to let go of that. And so now what is there is there. It's green. Um, I look after it and I do my best. So Clemens, my advice to you is let the strongest one prevail. Let's let selected, what do they call it? Natural selection take place in our front garden. Ah, uh, Boyki, I know it could be a hard pill to swallow, um, and I'm with you. But, but I, I, I'd, I'd do that. I seriously would do that. Okay, guys, um, I think that's enough on lawns. You've got the basics. Um, please do remember that it's not about um, when the lawn does start growing. It's not about how short we cut the lawn, but it's about removing just a third the tips off. Um, as often as we can because lawn is a plant although it's a grass like many other plants and remember like when we nip the grain point out of a fuchsia you know that it encourages side growth just the same with lawns exactly the same so by just nipping off the top keeping it managed we cause it to spread and thicken okay right so I've got an interesting lawn over here and um, this is a lawn of a difference and uh, guys, this is pet grass. And um, we, we speak about our pets a lot. And you know, uh, if you've got a garden, you've got fur kids. Whether you've got a little kitty kitty cut and, or whether you've got some wild monsters like ours, um, uh, whatever it is. We, 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 if you've got a garden, you, you, a plant person is a pet person as well. And um, so you can see that we've got these in, in, in little trays. And um, we plant the pet grass, which is this stuff here. So uh, we plant the pet grass. There's a whole lot of seed in here. Um, you'd probably get, um, of these little punnets of four packs, you'd probably get about six of these um, out of one packet of seed. And we just sow the pet grass. And notice what we've sown it in. Let me show you. Um, yo, and this is doing well. Look at it. Ooh, caramba. Look at that. Um, it's sown in palm peat. Okay, it's sown in palm peat, um, and you know what palm peat is, guys. It's the go-to for any seed germination. It's the go-to. Um, so this is the palm peat, um, and we make life very simple, guys. We make life very, very simple with this. It's a block of this, three liters of water. This is the stuff you end up with, and this is what we sow seeds in because it's light, it's friable, it works well, it's got lots of air pockets in it. And all you got to do is add water. That's all you got to do. The pet grass then germinates. And what we do is we just put this around. So, you know, out, outside the one door, um, we just put this down. And, and the kids, the fur kids come around and mm, munch, munch, munch. And then off they go again. 
So uh, have a couple of these. You'll be, you'll be quite surprised. Uh, you'll be most surprised at what happens. And they love it. They absolutely love it. Okay, whilst we're on the seeds, where's one of these kids? They must come and eat some of this pet grass. Oh, they're all sleeping. Oh, look at them. They are all sleeping. Rolo, Gracie, come here. Gracie, come here, Bubba. Come here. Gracie's got half an avo in her mouth. Um, Gracie, come. Come and get some pet grass. Gracie, come. Come see. Come here. Come see, Bubba. Come see. Oh, come see. Boy, do you want some pet grass? Do you want some, my boy? Oh, he's so nice. He's so nice. Tiwi, oh, it's so nice. Yes. <laughs> Um, let's see what happens. Guys, I know it's not um, a, a, your treat that, and it's in the wrong place. Um, you can see he's like, Mom, why is it here? Um, but he loves it, hey? They absolutely love it. There's your grass. Uh, yeah, he's probably more interested in um, seeing what's going on at the TV screen at the moment. Uh, but guys, whilst we're talking about seed, I want you to start considering and thinking about what you're going to be putting in for your summer garden. Not only that, but also for early spring. Okay, so sow it now um, because do you see what's going on? Hmm. Hmm. Mildly interested. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they always steal the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, so let's talk about seeds. Um, I, I, there's the thing about sowing seeds. And, and guys, you might say, oh, that Tanya's so boring. Oh, come on, guys. It's like we've all got packets lying around at home. I know we all do. And um, get out there and do them and sow them. And if you haven't been successful, then I want you to consider some of these, especially for the next season that's coming up. Giant giant zinnias. These are the ones that we saw in gardens of long ago. Um, beautiful, big pom-pom, like this big pom-pom flowers, almost like a dahlia or a dahlia as we know them. Tall plants, like up to here. Sow them, get them out, get them growing, get them germinating, and then plant them into slightly bigger pots and then into the garden. Or you could take this whole packet and just Sprinkle it, because it's tough as nails. You don't even need to do all those steps. Impatience, okay? If you're living in non-frost areas, non-frost, okay? Frost-free, then you can certainly sow these now. If you're really bad at tomatoes, and if you even have never actually sown tomatoes, then I'm only going to tell you to sow this one, which is the cherry tomato. Um, comes up like hair on a dog's back, like a weed, and you'll have sweet, juicy tomatoes that actually taste like tomatoes. That actually taste like tomatoes. Okay. Um, marigolds, of course, coming up for the summer heat will be fantastic. And if there's a spinach, if you love spinach, okay, so, so we, we grow this. We grow this in the veggie garden. It's got a lovely, it's got a big seed, so it's quite easy to, to sow and germinate. But this over here, this is a giant baby leaf spinach, if that makes sense. So you know the one that you buy? No, no, I know, I know, uh, no, don't shake your head. I know you buy it. You know the one that you buy in the packets from the shop? The baby leaf spinach, and then you, you throw it into a bowl and, and you add something to it and you, you, you've got a lovely baby spinach salad or whatever. So that one. This is this one's cousin. It's its other cousin. This one, its leaves get like, okay, like that big. You see that? Like that big. Big, 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 big. And you treat it like a Swiss chard or like a baby spinach, except that it grows at a rate of knots, okay? And remember, you're always harvesting from the outside, so you pick, 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 pick. How do you cook it? How do you treat it? You can eat it raw. You can take those leaves. You can roll up a nice piece of ham in there, a bit of feta, um, oh, whatever, a bit of, um, uh, oh, wait, there we go, a bit of olive tapenade inside there. You can use it as a dip. Um, this, this is like a go-to, an absolute go-to. 
So guys, there's, there's lots out there that you can be doing now um, coming into the beautiful season of spring. But come along with me um, because I want to show you some amazing plants that for certain um, need to find a spot in your garden from the spring now and of course going into um, the later spring. So I'm talking end of September. Now if you weren't all that kind of like good at your planning, your pre-planning, all of that, then and you've got some patches, you'll be able to pop along to your local builders and pick up plants that look like this. Like instant. But um beautiful Madeira daisies. Um, the colours now are vigorous, beautiful, and and I just love them. But look at this one here. It's got this little dark eye in the middle. Beautiful dark eye. And look at all the buds. This is this is the promise to come. This is the promise to come. Now remember guys, if you've had daisy bushes in the garden, okay, and they are still in the garden and they're looking a little bit worse for wear, okay? So in other words, maybe they've opened up and they've split, okay? Maybe these stems at the bottom are bare all the way up, okay? What I want you to do is the following. I need you to prune it. But when you prune it, never prune all the way down to hard wood or to bare wood because if you do that, the whole plant will die. Okay, and that's especially for lavenders as well, even your rosemary. So perennials, be cautious to prune back to hard wood that has no leaves. Okay, um, they are not programmed and they're not built to be able to cope when you remove all of it. If you're a bit nervous and a bit worried about it, this is always what I recommend, is take the plant, prune half of the plant first, half of it, you see, half and half, so half and half, does it make sense? Yes, half and half, and then you wait for this to grow, and then you prune the other half, if you're worried that it's gonna die. Okay, do that. Okay, look at these, oh caramba, ranunculus, ranunculi. Now, if you didn't plant the bulbs um, during the winter months, which you were meant to, but you still want, I mean, look at them. Look at these colors, aren't they insane? Um, these are actually seed-grown ranunculus that are available right now. The colors are amazing. Um, they are fantastic just to pop in and fill. And trust me, this is not all that they're going to do. Look here, there is still lots of promise to come. These will go on for six to eight weeks in your garden very easily. And the beauty about them is that they're beautiful to use in the vase. Look at that color. That's like an antique violet, I'd say. And it's completely spectacular. Um, pop them in. Remember to encourage them to flower more, which is what we want. You see that guy's over. Okay, he's finished. Okay, follow it down. And remember to just prune that off. Take that stalk off. Okay, take that stalk off so that we can encourage these to just flower some more. Um, but beautiful, aren't they? just beautiful in fact yeah after this i think a couple of these have to just go into the garden because my ranunculi didn't do so well plus the moles had a field day in the front garden i literally saw the bulbs you know when you watch the moles i actually saw the soil go like this and i grabbed the leaves of the bulb and i pulled it nothing underneath they ate the whole lot Okay, but never mind. It's okay. We've got to share and care, you know. So, ranunculus are definitely going in. Let's take a look at some others. Indigenous, guys. Indigenous. Beautiful osteospermums. You will find them all over at your local builders, guys. Beautiful colors. Mauves, whites, yellows, pinks. Um, full sun. Great for banks. Great for hanging baskets. Very good for the edges of flower beds. And incredibly good for hot dry sunny spots this is a true perennial you pop this in the garden you keep it watered well watered initially until it settles itself in and then you can cut back on the water um, very very good for the western cape incredibly good for that eastern cape where you're really not getting much water because these guys live 
in your sub karoo that's where they live that's where they're from that's where their home is from okay um really nice plant and will go on three four five years in your garden one plant one meter guys think about one plant will get one meter by about 40 centimeters in height so nice and nice and big nemesias this is also another little indigenous nemesia aromatica um, and called aromatica beautiful fragrance also yellows whites pinks great for popping in containers into your flower beds and they do such a good job very very new new almost like a miniature snapdragon isn't it um yeah it's like it's like a mini snapdragon look at it look at it beautiful absolutely beautiful okay guys i want you to come across the side over here um because i want to show you one or two other things now if we're looking at hot and dry hot and dry and i know you guys um in eastern cape um are, are very very concerned uh, because there, there is no water uh, there are still plants that can be used which you can plant and even with your gray water um, keep them alive and there are other things that we need to think about uh, when we are planting them and especially especially in in water shortage areas now for those of you who know this product this is just a keen reminder for you of what you should be doing if you're planting a plant in an area that doesn't get a lot of water <coughs> excuse me i got a frog um in an area that doesn't get a lot of water and when we talk about that we're not necessarily just talking from the sky we're talking about dry shade under trees we're talking about the area next to the house under the eaves that can be very very dry we're talking about poor soil where you water and the water just runs away um we're talking about when you plant a tree um that you're not necessarily going to be able to get to to water this is what i want you to use um it's hydro cash guys it's used in the agricultural industry it has been used for years and years you know when they plant those pine trees in the forests it's not like somebody goes back and waters them they are planted they are given once one sip of water and after that they are on their own buddy they are on their own and they are planted with this and to give you an idea a plant like this if you're planting at this size would only need five grams of hydro cash five grams and what hydro cash the way i prefer to use it is as follows so you add a bit of the granules into a container into a bucket whatever it is i'm putting it in the glass bowl so i can show you what it does you add water give it a few minutes give it a bit of a stir and this has also got carbon in it so it also improves your your makeup of your soil um what your soil is consists of um and look here look what's happening here can you see it looks like jelly it's turning into a jelly okay there look 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 at that look at that leave it a couple of minutes so these granules that granule look sucks up the water expands and now this this here that is the gold okay that is the gold so what you do is you dig your planting hole like normal prepare your planting hole okay put in your compost yes put in your bone meal put in your super phosphate whatever your choice is that you're putting in the planting hole and you've left this for a couple of minutes okay look what's happening it's getting thicker and thicker and thicker okay and then you take a handful of this beautiful gooey gel one or two handfuls and you put this into the bottom of the planting hole bottom of the planting hole and then you put the plant on top of it like that on top okay so there's a direct source of water for that plant even when you're not watering it and that is the beauty of this i mean when you talk to the guys in in, in agriculture that 
plant pine trees, um, even wattle trees um, for, for the industry. Um, thank you for the cloth. This is what they use. They've been using it forever. When you plant a, a, a tree or even a protea, and we're going into the drier months, you use that at the bottom of the hole, two, three handfuls. And I can, I can add more water to this, and it'll just continue sucking up the water and making more. So when your plant needs the water, the root zone, it's sitting right on top of it. It just goes, thank you very much. Okay. All right, guys, plants. Let's get back to the first one. Plants that can be planted now. Um, sun, tough, hardy, not water demanding. Beautiful mulfus. I mean, look at this geranium. Carumba. This looks like six plants, but it's one. This is the ivy leaf geranium. I love it. Um, it in pots. We use it a lot. We use it in hanging baskets. But not only do you get these beautiful colors, look at the foliage varieties. They've got strange names like Mrs. Pollock and things like that. But these are, these are insane. So even when they're not flowering, you've got this amazing, amazing color, kaleidoscope of, of color with the leaves. Um, I mean, look at this foliage on here. It's even got a bit of orange in it. Full sun. Um, Nice and compact, guys, and always going to give you some color. What I wanted to show you was the contrast of this quarter line, um, and this is a electric pink. Look at that nice leaf. Look at that leaf against there. Isn't that nice? Mm. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, um, it's petunia time. Filling up gaps, filling up spaces, uh, doing their job. And remember, lots of sun. When you're watering your petunias, you're not watering the foliage, you're watering the soil. Please do that. Very, very important. Because if you water the foliage, you tend to damage the flowers. Okay, And you also can bring the onset of diseases. Remember with petunias, guys, um, like any bedding plant, in order to make them go on, when it's finished flowering, remember to just deadhead it and take away those spent blooms. Okay. Fuchsias are coming into their own now. They really are starting to look fab um, in the garden. Remember, if they're getting a bit too tall and lanky, so sometimes you get like an odd shoot that just goes up here and goes up there. Remember, all I want you to do, especially with your fuchsias, is what we call just nipping out the growth point. You see that there? Okay. All I want you to do is get in there, thumb and forefinger, and take that out. Okay. Because then what we do is we encourage it to get thicker. Okay, but look at that. This is a little Tom Thumb, uh, semi shade, early morning sun, half day sun, quite happy, quite, quite happy. If that is just a beaut. Okay, right, folks. And um, another thing I want to quickly chat to you about, and let's go um, along. Where am I going to go to? I'm going to stay over here. Mason, you get yourself across to that side, and I'm going to move myself here. Right, guys. If you haven't pruned your roses, hoo, 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 you're in trouble. Okay. If you haven't pruned your roses, okay, guys, it's important that you do this now. Very, very important. Remember, when pruning your roses, one of the easiest, easiest methods, um, and we use the Ludwig's method, which is literally a pole. You take um, any type of pole, a stick, and you measure at 97 centimeters, 70 centimeters, your tall roses, you will prune down to 90. So you put the stick next to the rose and you use that and that's your level. Your um, shorter growing varieties, obviously you would then use your 70 mark. Once you've done the pruning and don't overcomplicate pruning guys, don't overcomplicate it please. Um, it's an outward facing bud. Get rid of the spindly bits the spindly bits, okay, um, and then this is the time, one of the only times, the few times that you can dig around the base of your roses, that you can dig around and get in there and agitate that, because now we're waking them up, okay, so this is what I want you to do, very, very important, okay, so with your roses, um, guys, once you have pruned, okay, you've pruned, 
And the question comes up about sealing, sealing your rose wounds. And there, there are two schools of thought here. Um, in the past, yeah, we used to get um, sterile seal. And we used to seal all those, all those, those, those open wounds. We used to seal them. And now, in the rose world, they're saying no. They're saying don't seal it. Because they say that when you seal, and they've obviously tested it and proven it, that when you seal that rose, that, that wound, there's a pressure buildup of the, of, the, 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 of the sap of the plant that goes. And, and then obviously it's like a pressure cooker. So it's been sealed and the, new, and the liquid is still moving up the plant. And they say that that can cause too much stress on the plant and actually cause diseases. Very interesting. So you'll find the top rose growers um, in the world and in South Africa do not seal the ends of their roses anymore. They don't. So you prune two to three millimeters above an outward facing bud, get rid of the spindly butts in between, okay? Any dead or diseased wood, you want to get rid of that. And then you want to feed, okay? So you're going to feed with something like this, Atlantic fruit and flower, organic, good, two handfuls around each plant, around the base of the plant. Likewise, you could use something like this, which is a 315, which is Talborn, Vita, Flower and Fruit. Very, very good. Either one of these guys, you are going to get brilliant results, okay? Sprinkle it around the base and then you need to do the following. Once you have sprinkled it around, aha, uh -huh, you got it. Zephok, again. Take your garden fork and I want you just to work that top five to seven centimeters, okay, around the rose bush. I want you just to work it, work it in a bit. Because what are we doing? Exactly the same with the lawn. We're aerating a bit, we're agitating those surface roots. When we agitate them, we initiate growth, okay. And then you want to add some beautiful mulch mulch around where you have now pruned and you've put your fertilizer this is our homemade mulch guys and i grabbed um, a pile from which we done about six weeks ago and it's still just literally sitting we haven't even put it onto the compost heap yet it's just like sitting there as a pile um and look at look at this after six weeks um it's already turning into some beautiful soil look at that from breaking it down so this is from the top you can see how I turned it over that's from the top so that's leaves um, sticks whatever we've got whatever we've been pruning because it's been a really busy pruning season in the last few weeks here um, put onto the pile and this is what it turns into this beautiful organic mulch this is made by a method of a shredder okay um, and there are lots of shredders there there's they great shredders that you can get hold of and you put a thick layer of this around your roses remember not near the stem okay just keep it just a little bit away from the stem but you put that beautiful thick layer so it almost acts like a little electric blanket around your soil good stuff you feeding the soil you you regulating the temperatures um and uh and you are going to be activating that fertilizer that you put around there much quicker if you put a good thick layer of mulch around. Okay, let's just check. Um, we have got some questions in the queue. Um, right. Please, can you share some organic ways to treat spider mite? Oh, on tomatoes. Shame. Oh. My tomatoes grow very nicely. Um, but when they, st uh, very nice, but when they start to ripen, I'm always dealing with spider mites. Yeah, Okay. Uh, even pots, but spider mites never leave. Okay, so roses, there, there are a couple of things um, that are very, very prone to, to spider mite. And I'm going to cover them very quickly. Roses, if they get stressed out through heat, heat stress, spider mite loves them. Tomatoes, cucumbers, um, hydrangeas, camellias, olives. Spider mite, spider mite, spider mite. What does spider mite look like? Oh, it's this weeny, teeny, weeny, insignificant little thing that you can barely see. You've got to have spectacles on and a magnifying glass. But how do you know you've got it? 
when you look on the surface of the leaf, you'll almost see a little mosaic, um, or like um, when you turn the leaf, or almost um, you can see a difference in the color. If you turn that leaf over, that's where they are. They're on the underside of the leaves. And they run around. And what they do is they've got a little proboscis thing straight into the plant cell. And they suck out all the chlorophyll. Ha! Ah, that's why you get that mosaic -y look. Guys, spider mites reproduce worse than rabbits. Every three days, they are making families and cousins and sisters um, like you will not believe. They are in incredibly active. So you've got to break the cycle. Um, and a good way to break the cycle, and this is a completely organic method of doing it. Guys, this is called EcoBuzz. It's a bio-insecticide. Okay, now that's actually, do you see that? That's actually what a red spider looks like, magnified. Okay. That's it there, and there's its web. You can see that over there. Now, this is completely organic. Um, it's In fact, it's a bio fungicide. So what it does is this will do white fly, it'll do false codling moth, and it will do red spider. And guys, you can use this on edible ornamentals. Um, and what it does is, as you apply this, and the way that you apply it, you get three sachets. One sachet into one liter of water, you spray it on the surface so that it forms little droplets. You are now activating this, which is a basically a fungus that you are activating. It comes alive and it starts growing over the leaves and it eats. It eats the red spider. It's brilliant. You've got to apply it once a week. Okay, once a week in order to get it under control. It's important. Once a week, and personally, if you're growing tomatoes or cucumbers or a crop that you are relying on the fruit and you know that they are susceptible to red spider, I would then apply this as a preventative. Because once you have got this good fungus growing on the leaves and red spider tries to come and infiltrate, it won't be able to take hold. And that for me, is important because you're not applying any chemicals at all. You can literally spray this onto a tomato. Um, you, could, you could spray it onto a cucumber and you can eat it immediately because there is no residual. Um, there is no, there, there's nothing. There is not a chemical. This is a good, natural, normal fungus that is found growing in our soil which has now been harvested and turned into something that we can use for our gardens. Well, it's so friendly that you can eat it. Well, I wouldn't recommend it, but I'm saying, like, I'm not going to grow another ear or, like, start talking to you in another language. Um, so, yeah, there are solutions out there. I do hope that helps for you. Okay, um, guys, very, very quickly, please, I want you to... If you've got your violas, your pansies that are in the garden, they must be looking amazing by now. Remember to keep them well fed, okay? Well fed, healthy plants will mean that they will continue to flower right until the end of December, the end of January for you. So that you've got all these beautiful spring delights still going on, which means that you need to give them food. Get a liquid food, something like multi-grow. Give it a good shake, a capful into five liters of water. Water the plants once every 10 days with this, okay? And what does it do? Encourages flowers, strengthens the plant, which means they are going to go on for longer. Use this in your containers. I feed my succulents with this. I, I feed almost everything, literally. If you walk past and you look like a plant, you're going to get some of this. Okay, that's how it works. Um, folks, there are a lot of other... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I had to show you these. Oh man, come look at this here, look at this here, look at this here. This is another beauty. <gasps> and you're going to find them all over. It's, it's a cousin of the petunia and it's called a calibracoa. Um, but look at that colour, isn't it stunning? Um, and we always plant some of these in the spring garden uh, because that's when they are best now. That is when they do best. Okay guys, we've got another question coming up here. Uh, my leaves have holes 
probably cut worm, but the worms are not around. Okay. Um, Shireen, it ain't a cut worm. Okay. Now, let's learn about this. Um, very quickly. A cut worm lives in the soil. Okay. Cut worm lives in the soil. And when a cut worm eats your plant, it, it literally, at soil level, it cuts it off. That's why it's called a cut worm. And if you've got little seedlings and you come back and the seedling has fallen over, like somebody came in there with a chainsaw, that is cutworm. I don't think you've got cutworm. I think you've probably got snails. Um, I think you've got snails. And because you can't see the cutworm and you won't see the snails during the day because snails go and hide during the day. So two things I want you to do tonight. I want you to take your torch and I want you to go out and look at the plants. What you can even do, I like doing this, just as the sun is setting, just take your hose pipe and like, just a little bit of water. I'm not, just, just wet the leaves. Soon as, soon as night has fallen, go out with your torch and have a look because if there's a bit of rain, a bit of water, the snails are activated and they come out and you will find them, I guarantee you, chomping away at your plants. There are ways of dealing with them which are much better, which are also very safe. Um, and for instance, this over here, which is called Eco Bait. Guys, this is a bait, but just before you get all hot under the collar, um, this over here is actually, it's a bran which has been impregnated with iron. Okay, iron. It's not a chemical. It's not a harmful chemical. So if your dog eats this, it's not going to fall over. If the hardy dog eats it, its legs aren't going to be facing up in the air. Um, you can put this bait down with confidence, knowing that it will not harm the animals around, the insects, as well as us. So you sprinkle this down around the plants. The snails are attracted to the bran. They eat it. It's packed full of iron, which actually is the part that kills them. Okay. And then they die. Yes, they all die. Okay. Another way to do it, um, which we particularly like doing in this household, um, is by using a little slug trap. Okay. Uh, this does require a trip to your local um, beverage store where you purchase a beer. Um, I don't know, one, two, six, I don't know, whatever you want to get. And what we do is you bury this. So say we've got clivias or agapanthus or wherever we have seen snail activity. In the center, you dig a little hole, you bury this. Bury this little guy up to about there. Pour in some beer, put the lid on it, okay, so that the dogs don't come along and drink all the beer. <laughs> and what then happens is the snails are then attracted to the yeast, the smell of the yeast in the beer. They come along, they climb through here, they fall in there, drink it up and die incredibly happy. What a way to go. Okay. Uh, once a week or so, you can then go and empty this out, pour this onto your compost heap. Don't throw the snails in the dustbin. They've been eating all your plants that you've been fertilizing. Imagine how much nutrition they've got in them. You know what I'm saying. Um, right, guys. Spring is here. It is happening. There's lots to do in the garden. Remember, keep your plants deadheaded. Keep them well fed. Um, pop something new in the garden that kind of pushes your boundaries um, that you might not have tried before. Uh, remember, guys, that if you're needing a bit more inspiration than what you found today, um, you can grab my magazine, The Gardener, Detainee, or Grow to Eat at your local builders. Remember, these guys are magazines are just before you go into the gardening section there's a stand there with these brilliant magazines on they will tell you more than i can ever tell you in an hour they will tell you what to prune what to plant what to look after how to care for it and mm, there also some yummy recipes in these over here so get along to your local builders and get your copy guys remember there's also loads on the builders blog go to the builders website check out the blog for what to do now, great DIYs, and also it's just a whole of inspiration. And also check out their YouTube channel. Um, for those guys, for those questions that we haven't got to within this hour, I promise I'll get to them a little bit later this afternoon. Um, and 
enjoy the spring guys it's a beautiful time of the year um and remember mother nature can still send a few cold snaps our way so if you have got frost tender plants remember still to wrap them up and keep an eye on that weather app uh guys Enjoy. God bless you and yours. Till next time, I see you here. Take care of you and yours and happy gardening.